it's just so crazy that I can actually say that I'm 453 days sober. It's wild. It's so wild. It's so exciting though. It's overwhelming, but it's very exciting. My name is Caitlin. If you are new to my channel and if not, welcome back. Thank you so much regardless for clicking on this video and tuning in. Um, I had filmed one of these chit chat, sit down videos at 200 days of sobriety and Sunday marked 450 days. Today is Wednesday and I am at 453 days. I wanted to sit down today ultimately to document just the changes, um, the fluctuations, just kind of what's happening in sobriety. A lot has changed <laughs> uh, for the better. It's been damn hard. It's been so damn hard. It's like I feel like my brain right now is a little bit like eager to share a lot with you but I'm trying to organize my thoughts and gather my attention right here in this moment. Since filming that 200 days of sobriety, one of the biggest changes that I've encountered is I've gotten a therapist and prior to getting a therapist, for whatever reason, I held a lot of fear and resistance to talk therapy. And holy smokes, it has been absolutely life-changing. There have been other people in the sober community that encouraged me to go to AA meetings as an alternative. Um, but that just doesn't call to me the same way that talk therapy has and getting a therapist has really and truly changed my life. She has given me life skills. She has given me tangible tools week after week that has directly affected my happiness my wellness, my stress levels, my anxiety. So that's been a huge change. Initially, when I got the therapist, I was seeking support in my sobriety. And in meeting with her every other week, we've really peeled back a lot of layers that, truth be told, I had no idea. I was harboring those things. One of the self-help books that I've recently read, How to Do the Work, which is fantastic. If you are into self-help books, I would highly recommend that you check this book out. Again, it's called How to Do the Work. It's by the Holistic Psychologist. In reading the book, it brought some repressed memories to my mind, to my body, to my heart that I didn't know they were there. And that would have never happened Yes, of course, through the book, but I would have never picked up the book. I would have never gotten the therapist had I not gotten sober. What I have also found since I last filmed a video, I have so much more time. I have so much more time on my hands. It's given me the gift of space. It's given me the space of freedom. It has expanded my awareness tenfold. Not waking up in the morning feeling like shit, not waking up in the morning and the first thought is, am I going to throw up? What did I say last night? What happened? The hangover anxiety. I didn't even know that was a thing until I got sober. <laughs> it's also been really fascinating how drinking is everywhere. And I guess I knew this, but I didn't really know that. Drinking is everywhere and it really feels like it's coming at you from all directions when you're sober. I know I had previously said that AA meetings were not for me and that still holds true. I have never gone to an AA meeting, but I have attended a handful of the refuge recovery meetings. They speak to Buddhism. I've got the book. I've read a number of passages. Again, I've attended a handful of meetings and they were really powerful and very potent. I remember the very first one that I attended it was just so damn cool knowing that I'm not alone and that other people struggle and we don't have to do this alone. I don't have to do this alone. If you're sober or curious about getting sober, you also don't have to do this alone. So that was really powerful about the meetings, but I just did not feel comfortable or as if I would have enough 
one-on-one -on -one attention the way that I do with my therapist. Um, so I've attended meetings. Refuge recovery was beautiful. I've gotten a therapist. I've realized the abundance of time. My brother, uh, I was on a FaceTime call with him not that, that long ago. And he made a joke about like how I would be with the abundance of time, how I would be knitting doilies for my hot sauces. Just because you do, you have so much time, so, so much time. And that's been really beautiful. Um, I've been reading a lot more with that gift of time. In sobriety, I have also established better boundaries. I have empowered myself to say no when I want and need to say no. I've empowered myself to say yes when it feels right and it feels good and it feels like it's in line with my goals and my wellness and my health. Sobriety has opened my eyes in a way that nothing else ever has. In a conversation with one of my best friends last weekend, yoga was the first thing that I had ever encountered that made me feel like I had the power to heal myself. Um, that was the first time I was really introduced to something so beautiful and so big, so big. Um, but sobriety has now given me the space, the energy, the momentum to actually execute and put that knowledge into action. I'll tell you, hangovers alone and not being hungover in the morning, it's like reason enough to get sober. I think since my last video, the first couple of months of sobriety, they were really beautiful and they were so light and easy. And then there was a shift from sobriety into recovery. Recovery's, recovery's hard. Recovery, I think, is the real like bread and butter. It's really like you getting into the thick of it, all the shit that you've been pushing down for years and years and numbing away from and putting under the rug and not facing and not talking about. Recovery has given me the space to look at those things. And I wouldn't change it for the world. So I imagine that you've clicked on this video um, because either you are also sober or because you are sober curious. If you take nothing else away from this video and the couple of minutes that I've been brain dumping on you, you don't have to do it alone. Whether you decide to get a therapist, whether you decide to go to meetings and you find your support system, your community, whether you put yourself out there and people, people show up, that's been something else really beautiful and something I've been so grateful for. As I've become more comfortable and courageous in sharing my sobriety, just posting on Instagram or Facebook, the amount of people who I had no idea, I had no idea they were sober, I had no idea people were sober until I got sober, but the amount of people that have reached out, expressed gratitude, said how brave I was to be talking about this openly, that has been really beautiful. And it's so encouraging. It's so damn encouraging. Just know that whatever it is that you're going through, sobriety, recovery, addiction, eating disorder, trauma, you don't have to do it alone. And I think that was kind of what I thought that was the misconception that you know you're like swimming upstream by yourself but there are people uh, there are people in your life that love you dearly and will support you and be incredibly proud of you and if nothing else I support you and I'm proud of you it's a very brave thing to do to get sober it's a really brave thing to do to look in the mirror at those parts of yourself that you're not proud of and that is something since the last video that I had filmed. It's just forgiving myself. And that's a daily effort. That's a daily choice. Forgiving myself for the things that I am not proud of. Forgiving myself for the things I have done that were hurtful and harmful to myself and to others. I'm so happy to be doing this. So happy. It is effort every single day. 
I also use a daily counter. I believe I shared this in the last video, but I love the I Am Sober app. Watching that number grow, as I said right at the beginning, it is exciting, but it just feels like there's so much pressure and there's so much more on the line. In another conversation, since the last video that I posted, someone was asking like just how, you know, how, what made me decide, what made me commit to this path. And really, it was my deciding that I was worth it. Self-worth is something I have stumbled upon, big time tripped upon, fell into <laughs> with my therapist. And it's something I struggle with, not believing, deeply feeling that I am not worthy of big, beautiful things. And it's very hard for me to admit, but you know, that's how we connect and that's how we grow by being vulnerable and being honest. A beautiful skill that my therapist has helped me with. Not necessarily a positive affirmation, but just imagine what it would feel like if you believed that you were worthy of big, beautiful, grand things. Whatever it is that your heart desires, just imagine what that would feel like if you believed genuinely believed that you were worth it. It feels really good, like a visceral experience in my body. My body reacts to that. It feels interesting because it's not my norm, it's not my baseline, but sobriety and this choice, it's me saying every day, Caitlin, you're worth it. And as you're watching this, you are worth it. Whatever your path is, whatever your journey, you're worth doing the hard things. Right, it's hard, it was hard being drunk, it was hard drinking, it was hard doing drugs, it was hard, that was hard. Being hung over was really hard. This is also hard. <laughs> the other side of the spectrum, sobriety, recovery, addiction, it's also hard facing those things. So either way, it's hard, but you just have to choose what's worth it for you. And here I feel far happier, I feel healthier than I ever have in my entire life. Come to find eating your vegetables and doing your yoga and your meditation, those things are all fabulous. But without looking at your mental health, without acknowledging the emotions that you carry very heavy in your heart, without looking at what's happening within, all of the external, it just can't penetrate. It can't make its way through. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope you can take away the fact that you are worth it, whatever it is that you decide to do, whatever it is that you're curious about, whatever it is that might be really challenging, you're worth it. I'm worth it, you're worth it. And thank you so much for watching this video and making it to the very end. You know, there is this huge stigma with alcohol and substance in general. It's very normalized. It's glamorized. I've been thinking about that a lot today, how glamorized it is. Movies, TV, social media, and it's terrible. It's really sad, it's really scary, but when you start to open your eyes and you start to wake up, there's so much more that's available to all of us. We just have to choose it. You just have to do that swim upstream, baby. Swim upstream, and it's hard. It's so hard, but it's so worth it. So again, thank you for carving out time in your precious life to connect with me and just to hear an update from me and my sobriety and my recovery. If you're thinking about it and you're curious about it, just take it one day at a time. And that's all that I can do. Ah, I know there was one more thing that I did want to share before I sign off from the video. Often when I run into people who I haven't seen in a long time and I share that I'm sober, <clears throat> One of the first questions that I'm met with is, oh, but are you going to drink at your wedding? Kevin and I are getting married in September. Right now it's March. And for some reason I have felt the need to go into this big explanation as to why I won't drink at my wedding. I have no tolerance. All of my friends, my family, my loved ones will be there. Um, I have this fear of blacking out. I give this whole explanation as to why I'm not going to. 
So I'm trying to become more skillful in just a simple no. I won't be drinking at my wedding. So this is kind of like a public service announcement. When someone, when someone tells you that they are sober, a congratulations is great, it's good for you is great, I'm so proud of you is wonderful. Um, instead of asking that person, will they drink when? Will they drink for this big event? Will they drink for that big event? Instead of prompting them with the question of, will you drink at any certain point? It's just fine to say congratulations, period. Uh, drinking is already everywhere and then to be met with those hard questions, um, it's just becoming a little more aware and expanding your awareness as you encounter more sober people. I think that a lot of people are choosing this path because of the detriment, the hurt, the anger, the fear, the worry that drinking has instilled in so many of us. Speaking for myself anyways. And meeting someone with that question of, but will you drink when? What about your wedding? Don't you want to drink at your wedding? After just expressing the excitement and thrill of getting sober and this massive commitment. Um, so that's just one more thing that's been interesting over the last year and couple of months. When you see someone and they find out that you're sober and it's like, oh, but won't you drink when? After however long it's been. So with that, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you feel curious, you feel maybe excited. If you have any questions, comments, do let me know. I'm happy to be here as a support system, uh, just to ping pong any ideas off of or just start a conversation. I have been very grateful for the conversations that my sharing on social media has sparked with a number of people. So um, have a beautiful day. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others and know that you're worth whatever it is that you desire. Thank you everyone. Have a beautiful day.